Hey guys, it's another day and it's another tuber. I'm on the A1, just kind of pulled off for a quick pit stop, bit of caffeine, but yeah, I'm heading up. And not too far now, probably about 70, 80 more miles to meet up with a fantastic tuber. Um, a real, uh, yeah, class act within the community. Someone I haven't met before. And we're going to be going to what I believe to be one of the best, best retro video game shops in the country. So yeah, see you in a little bit. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing well. Just wanted to do a video to talk about a road trip or mini road trip that I've been doing. And this week I had a couple of days off work, so I thought I'd get in the car um, and, uh, and drive around. There was a particular tuba, clue in the background, um, and a particular place, Doorway to Darkness, uh, that I really wanted to visit. I've been following them on Instagram for quite some time, even exchanging, you know, the odd message with the with the owner, and just wanted to, um, you know, photos are great, videos are cool, and I have loads of other tubers have um, have already kind of covered the place, and I know Gold Tooth is a, is a regular um, there as well, so he's always, uh, you know, regularly singing their singing their praises. But I don't think you can beat actually, uh, you know, heading and visiting some of these these places yourself. So that's exactly what I what I did. So Thursday just gone got in the, the car, got up at like silly o'clock, um, punched in the uh, the details and the sat-nav and about three and a bit hours later um, I arrived and I should say within this video um, I'll include some photos, I've got some footage as well so I might just group the footage together and um, and let you let you have a look at that and uh, yeah arrived, was greeted by the fantastic uh, Gold Tooth who was you know, carried me over the threshold into the shop, or not, not quite, maybe metaphorically speaking, he did. And yeah, had a look around. Uh, the uh, owner um, himself, James, wasn't about, unfortunately, but there was a super duper, uh, really helpful guy that was running the shop on the day called Will. And yeah, he was, he was handy. I'd already, I'd looked at the website the night before, but I couldn't, yeah. Get a bit too eager, perhaps, but was kind of looking at a few bits. So um, there was there was kind of areas I wanted to target on. So yeah, got there. It's it's an absolute um, yeah delight. There's just so much, so much stuff. The amount of not just games, but like box consoles, um, you know, box peripherals, accessories, everything in really really good condition. But you know, I was like you know, about three or four Sega Saturn boxes just lined up. Um, you know next to each other and uh, it's not just not just games there's there's toys as well you know retro toys uh, and also re-releases of the old retro toys um, but yeah all sorts kind of Star Wars which is my my bread and butter a lot of vintage uh, toys there um, you know real Ghostbusters uh, Thundercats pretty much any classic toy line um, if you're around my age and kind of you know, growing up in you know 80s and 80s and 90s yeah, lots of those toys will, will feature um, in the in the shop, and it's kind of it's split as two, you know, big size rooms, um, you know, and it's the the first one is predominantly you know like games. I think the second one was a few game related bits, but it's mainly um, it's mainly toys, and everything's everything's on you know display, really accessible to uh, to get to, and um, yeah, I was in there. For quite some time, just having yeah, taking my time, having a look around, and uh, yeah, absolute, absolutely awesome place. So yeah, my road was another couple of places I visited. So I'm not going to do a crazy long video. So I'm just going to do I'll do three parts. This one's doorway um, to darkness, obviously, um, and then we'll cover off two other um, shops in the next two two videos. And again, I got you know footage, footage for them. So hopefully you'll you'll enjoy it. Uh, but first things first. Yeah, we did a little gift exchange uh, with, with, with Gold Tooth. It's his birthday on Monday coming. Not quite sure when this video will, uh, will, will go out. But yeah, the next Monday coming up is his uh, girth day. So I had a couple of little bits for him. Scouring through his Xbox uh, recent video, which is the one behind me, just trying to work out what he's got and what he hasn't got. And uh, some stuff isn't fully um, alphabetized. So uh, yeah, it was a bit of a gamble, but fortunately the, the two I did get him, he hadn't got, which is a, which is a result. But yeah, he turned out absolutely awesome 
um, blooming gift um, for myself. Love the Funko. I love the you know the pops. I'm very kind of reserved in terms of what I go after purely because of space. Otherwise, I'd probably have you know even more. But this one is an absolute classic, and uh, I haven't seen it out and about to be honest. But it's yeah, it's ET uh, in disguise. Absolutely, yeah, blooming fantastic. Just loads, loads of detail. I've got some of these at the LJ toys. Got a collection of them, but um, it's quite, you know, obviously back in the day, probably a cruder sculpting and certainly not as colourful as, um, as as this one. It's just yeah, an absolute blooming beaut. But yeah, and there's a yeah, a few series of there's a series of them as you can see on the um, on the back. There's some alternate. So yeah, a million thank yous, uh, go to absolutely yeah, loved it, loved meeting you, mate. Um, yeah, just top top guy, top channel. I'll leave details below, but. I suspect 110% of you already subscribed to him, but just in case, I'll uh, I'll leave details to his channel below. Yeah, super super guy. So what did I pick up? Yeah, if if you've been watching the channel, um, you know a little bit about me. Then if you know like handheld is my thing, so there's a lot of handheld stuff. Um, not as I say a lot, but there's a few bits. Like I haven't got loads and loads of stuff, but the percentage of handheld is is, is majority is handheld related bits, but. And let's, let's get stuck in. So they had a nice, well, loads of nice cabinets, but the Game Gear one was one that I kind of went went straight for. Um, yeah, a couple of, couple of special ones here, which I haven't seen elsewhere, uh, occasionally like on, on, on eBay, but let's get the more common games out of the way. Um, so you've got Andre Agassi. And I think these three are direct ports of Master System um, games. You've got Super Space Invaders. It's quite a nice, yeah, one knows about that game, but yeah, quite a nice, nice version. Um, and then, yeah, I like this game, Outrun Europa. So I think you got the Ferrari in there, but as well as that, I think he was on like a speedboat, aren't you, and like on a motorbike as well. It's still the, um, the kind of the time challenge element, you know, that carries through in all the Outrun series, but I think there's a shooting element um, as, as well. So that's a good, yeah, good title. 99% sure that's the same as the Master System one, just a, um, just a quick port. I can clear my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, this one, I'm assuming it got a power, power release, but it's you don't see it that often. Um, Tales Adventure, uh, obviously relative of, of, of Sonic. It's a, plat you know, it's a platformer. It's a bit slowed down compared to Sonic. He's not kind of racing. Uh, racing from A to B, and uh, it's a different kind of attack mechanic as well. I don't think you can just jump on on top of people and kind of curl up and and count them out. There's there's yeah different kind of attack mechanic, um, kind of puzzle more it's like puzzle related elements to it as well of uncovering areas, um, but going through the level at your own at your own pace. But um, yeah, I've only seen gameplay. I haven't actually haven't played it properly yet. I haven't long been back from uh, from up north. But uh, yeah, chuffed to, to get that one. Uh, and then the other one, a bit rarer over here because I'm sure it didn't get a power release. Um, but like Sonic Drift, I think, I don't even know if it got a US release. So this is like a Japanese um, Japanese car. Didn't do, I think back in the day, didn't do that well. Uh, it was kind of around, people were accused it of being a bit of a, and arguably it is to a certain degree, a Mario Kart um, kind of, kind of copy and maybe not, Obviously not as good as um, you know Super uh, Mario Kart on the on the snares, and um, yeah, also some of the visuals as well. You can only see a certain distance in front of the um, the, the cart, so that kind of three D feel feel realism um, perhaps isn't yeah isn't there compared to a lot of other racing games. But um, but that said, it's still yeah, it's not a cart you see. Uh, not that I'm going for another crazy full set collection, but it's not a cart you see that often. They're a good price. Um, so, so yeah, I grabbed that. Um, and then the other, yeah, the other handheld is, I've had this had this back in the day, nicely boxed, um, sold, I can't remember where, it probably went when I sold my first uh, GBA, Game Boy Advance. I got back the loose cart. Um, and then for the life of me, I was thinking about the other day, I was like, I've actually got the boxed version. It's a very, very common common title, and I didn't. And again, they had a really nice, yeah, pretty nice example of it in Doorway to Darkness. Not, not perfect, a bit kind of 
a few bits around there, but for do me absolute fine. I whack it in a box protector. The manual is nice. Um, but yeah, Mario Kart Super Circuit. I absolutely love this game. Lovely. Uh, must have, must have been a launch title for the for the GBA. If not, it followed very quickly after. Because um, I remember, yeah, I didn't have loads of GBA games back in the day, but this was certainly um, certainly one of them. But yeah, absolute absolute corker. Next bit is all about a rabbit hole. I'll be honest, and I kind of I'm going to blame it all on on James, <laughs> retro import gamer, um, blaming it in a good way. It's, there's some kind of joy and happiness off the back of it, but. Um, he kindly, when I met up with him, he gave me a couple of uh, Mask ZX Spectrum games, put them on the shelf, and you know what, actually, it looks quite nice, and then I had, maybe I was daydreaming um, the other day, but I'm sure I was daydreaming most days, and I thought, how nice would it be to have kind of the ZX Spectrum cassettes I had back in the day, I had a few, but like not, not a crazy amount, um, so yeah, I kind of started on a bit of a bit of a journey. I've only got, I think it's uh, three here um, to look at. But when I went to the other game shops, there may be some um, some more there. But yeah, very very common games, but games full of nostalgia for me. A couple of what I'd say are good games. The third one, eh, not so much. Um, but yeah, Ghostbusters. I mean, I love this. Love this as a kid, one of the first Specky games um, I, I played, and yeah, funny kind of gameplay to it. Obviously, you build up, you pick your car, you pick your accessories, you drive around the streets, um, you find a building that's kind of flashing, flashing red, and therefore full of uh, full of slimers, uh, full of ghosts, and then you head on in uh, with your two Ghostbusters, lay the trap, and then bosh, hopefully you earn a bit of money. But yeah, love this game back in the day. Um, so yeah, the Master Tronic, the Ricochet version by Master Tronic. And it's even got, I'm sure that's not the Specky, what was it, the C64 perhaps? Yeah, footage on the back, the cheeky buggers. So yeah, loving that. <clears throat> this one, I, to be honest, I think I played before Ghostbusters. Horace Ghost King, what an absolute classic. Still to this day, it's the only Horace game I've played, I haven't played the... Is it Horace and the Spiders? And I think there's a maybe a third one as well. Maybe maybe some additional ones to that. But this one, absolutely loved. Getting your skis, obviously crossing the road. Um, getting your skis, going in the ski shop. It's sort of the hardest, that bit is, is like Frogger, I guess, isn't it? That, that stage, but it's so ruddy difficult. And he doesn't stand still. You can't do left and right. He's non-stop. And you do, it's, it's just crazy. Um, then cross back the road, and then you're on the slopes, and that's the obviously the the, uh, the image that you see on the uh, on the front. But yeah, love this game. <clears throat> this one, great cover, cheesy movie, but a hard game, not a great game. Stallone's Cobra, uh, a bit like Hit Squad again. It was good. All these were you know very good good prices. I don't know if they're assuming they're tested, but even if they're absolutely full of full of gunk inside uh, mouldy and not working it doesn't matter because they're going to sit on sit on the shelf as a bit of a display piece um but yeah so horace goes skiing yeah ghostbusters and cobra so chuff with them um and then the final two yeah master system games so this one i can't remember for the live it's retro red steve i can't remember someone not going to be like the best of games but i think someone's Quite likes it. Maybe it's one of those kind of not so good games that you you find playable. But um, might be Steve. If it is you, Steve. Let me know. Otherwise, God knows who it is. But yeah, Desert Street, uh, Speed Trap, uh, Road One Runner. Get my teeth in. Um, and Wiley Coyote. So yeah, Hang Tab. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to fire this one up. Quite nice in terms of the yeah, good manual. Um, decent car. That doesn't look like it's been played that much, probably not, maybe not a good sign. Maybe it's not that good a game. Um, and then this one was one that I saw on the website. And um, it's not, yeah, it's on eBay, it does command a bit of money, not as much money as the as the sequel, which is probably one of the 
probably top five most expensive Mars System games, but this is this is the original, so it's it's a darn sight cheaper and a lovely copy of it. Um, and it's Smurfs. And I can't when I was looking at the Master System shelf, I thought I'll find it. Um, so you're looking under S for Smurfs and then T for the the Smurfs, but um, I guess it's a French, yeah, it must be a French cover. So left, I'm not even going to pronounce it, but it was under L basically. But uh, the poor guy, Will, who was, yeah, awesome, awesome guy in the shop. Probably spent a good like 10 minutes trying to try and hunt this one down. There's so many games. And he's like, must find it, must find it. And he found it and it's in, yeah, it's in super duper, super duper condition. It's got the hang tab. It's even got the little sticker, the Sega sticker kind of folded away and um, there. Um, I don't think the manual doesn't look like it's even been opened. It's just like really, really cool. Lovely car as well. So yeah, another one for the Master System collection. Where will it end? When I was leaving, Goldtooth gave me a recommendation for a place that was only 10, 15 minutes down the road. So I got in a car, went to that, and I'll cover that off in the next video. Um, awesome place. So yeah, look out for that one. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one. All the best and cheers.